Right, finishing off page eight, after finishing off the right leg, step 13, you've got the start of the left leg. So you've got G6 with the D16 square piece and the number D14 with a one and two orientation. So that's that there. Then you've got the second part of step 13, which is the polycap sleeve number one. That's in there. With the square part, square mounting tab out, and the circular one on the inside. And then you've got the step seven arm, which is about to be mounted into that. Right, going on to the next page, page nine, I'm uh, just about to start step 14. Before I start step 14, if you remember from the previous update, where the claws for the left leg, the pin had nearly snapped off. Well, I've glued that on, it's dried, and these two pieces have gone down on those pins a hell of a lot better than the loose ones from the right leg. I'm probably still gonna glue those on, to be honest. And then you've got the claws, they've gone on quite loose, so I'll have to glue those on. So moving that out of the way, start step 14. Now, step 14 is the uh, for the left leg, it's a pretty much a rinse and repeat from step 10 for the right leg. So you've got G4 into B9. So that's that. Very easy to put in, just like step 10. Then you've got the D11 um, grenade launchers times three. So that's those. And you've got the M15 and M16 ball joint with a K2 mount. That's that. And then you've got the B7 and the B8 pieces, which will have to go on to the left leg once these two parts of step 14 is done. I've took those off the sprue and those are now ready to be all mounted and that's ready to be put together. Right, so here's the uh, finished article for step 14, putting all the parts together from the previous update. It went together not too bad. I had to use my pressure clamping bits and parts to put them um, to put them together, especially that there, just under my finger. The pin wouldn't go right in, but eventually it did once I put the pressure on. So, like I said, that's all step fourteen done on that part of the left leg. Right, going on to step 15 for the left kneecap, which is a rinse and repeat from step 11 for the right kneecap. So going on to step 15, you've got C30, which is the kneecap. Then you've got I14, I8 and I6, which go into those little T-shape, L-shape um, tabs on the back of the pieces and the holes in the kneecap. Then you turn it over and then you've got the D4, um, explosive um, doors, explosive launchers, and again those open like that as you can see. You mount them from the underneath with those two little mounting pins that lock in to the back of the kneecap. So step 15 is done with the kneecap and that's now ready to be mounted onto there. Right, I've now mounted the kneecap from step 15 onto the upper part of the leg. Went in really easy, the door's still open. Right, so now going on to step 16, which is a rinse and repeat of the step 12 for the, the right leg. Step 16 is for the left leg, so you've got all the three parts there. I've temporarily mounted the claws onto the uh, foot of the lower leg. So now all these are ready to be mocked up together. Right, mocking up the left leg. Because much like the right leg, I'm going to need to keep all this separate. So I can spray paint and detail these separately and put them back together. So the arm piece for the upper leg is resting on that ball joint. Underneath there you've got the pin. And I've uh, put the claws on. Very, very gently. So that's the left leg 
mocked up. So if I just move this over slightly, hopefully it will fall over because it has done twice. Then I bring in the right leg. And that's how um, they're pretty much going to look once the body goes on. But not too bad at all. So that's the left leg all finished. Right, moving on, uh, step 17, which is these four parts. Now, step 17 is at the bottom of page 9, after finishing off the uh, left leg construction. Now, these two steps here to make a movable link, which, for, which is that there. And that's the movable link. That's in basically four parts, once constructed. You've got the M19 like chain link in the middle, M14 and M13 plug into the top hole, that makes the one part on the link, which is that bit there, just above my thumb, with that little line in the middle. Then you've got this little bit here between the thing and the thumb underneath, that is M8. An M9 into the, the secondary hole of the M19 link. So you push those together. And then the bottom part of the link, which is M6 and M7. M7's got a little peg on it. That goes through the hole of the M9 and M8 link. And then the 6 plugs into the little plug on the other side. And that's that link there. Just below my finger and thumb. And it does move into various positions. So you've got that one there. And you can push that like that. And then you've got the last part of step 17, which is 17, yeah. So you've got F11, F5, and F1 that goes in the middle. Don't quote me on this, but I think that is the lower jaw for the interior cockpit. So I've just got to put these onto the link now. Those three onto that link. Right, um, I'm doing the fitting of the um, what I think is the lower jaw of the interior cockpit. I'm looking at the orientation of how to put the parts together. Now looking at the diagram, you've got the F11. This is upside down by the way, so you've got the F11 part there, which is that. Then you've got the F1 part there, which I believe is the lower floor of the interior cockpit. And that plugs in some tabs on the lower floor into those little rectangular holes there. What was confusing me was the, the movable link. Now that little tab there, according to it, goes in that little square hole there. Which would be that, but it's actually wrong. But then I looked at the fitment diagram here. Originally I thought this was what it would look like once the two holes are fitted, but it isn't. That's F11. And that's where you've got to put that tab of the fusible link. Right in that slot there at the back. So just be wary of that when you're fitting this part. Right, there we go. Step 17. The last part of step 17 is all finished. So basically what I did is um, the pins in F5. You line them up to the pinholes of F11. Um, the F1 and the movable link that I put into F11 lined up perfectly with F5, no problems at all. Um, I had to squeeze that bit there at the back with my clamp to my thumb my finger because it wouldn't go in 100% but eventually it went. But this isn't the lower jaw for the cockpit, this is actually the upper part of the head. Because there's what, there's what I'm constructing now. And that is the upper part of the head. On the next page, that's when I start doing the lower jaw for the cockpit. So, that part, part 17, on the last part of page 9, is all finished. Welcome back. Step 18 on the next page. This is the interior cockpit, which I mistakenly identified in step 17, where step 17 was the top part of the head. So first part of step 18, you've got F2 and F6, which is a backrest 
for the operator seat which plugs in to J9. So there's F2 and F6, let me turn the flash on. F2 and F6, you push those together. Then you push J12 for the operator seat into F2 and F6, and then you push that into J9 to make the first part of the cockpit. Now before I go any further, the plans are telling me that I've got a paint liquid snake. So there's my little liquid snake figure. Sitting on a UK five penny piece, so you can see how small he is. Let me just zoom in. There we go. He's all done. Now I use some various colours for this. So for his flesh, I use the Humbrol number 61 flesh. So that's for his arms and his chest. You got number 26 Humbrol. That's for his combat trousers. You got the uh, another Humbrol, which is 251, which is a very dark brown. So I picked out his gloves and his boots in that. And for his hair, I've done again Humbrol acrylic number tra number 24 trainer yellow. Right, so and also a bit of dark grey between his legs, uh, which was 36378 which will match the grey of the seat. Now turning him round slightly, you can see underneath there that little pale colour, that is just the bare plastic, that's the connector that sits in there. So I'll zoom out. Right, so the next part is to put him in and then I have to complete the uh, first part of the, con the um, cockpit You've got J4 and J3, which form the centre console and the uh, hand actuators. So that's where I'm sitting at the moment.